the session's priority uh, was rebalancing the budget. Uh, after months of work and months of both public hearing and stakeholder input and all kinds of conversations, um, we came up with a plan to address the billion dollar shortfall in the budget due to the pandemic revenue loss. Uh, with that plan, we were able to make strategic decisions to protect services and return the state's budget to, to balance. And that's what we succeeded in doing yesterday. Now, and the way I would look at it, we did it in three main ways. We tapped $400 million in our educational stability fund reserves to keep education whole in this crisis from early childhood to K-12 to higher education. Um, there were some reductions here and there, but in general, we kept all of those uh, parts of the education spectrum harmless. And I think that's really important right now. Students need uh, predictability and stability. Our school districts do, our families do. Um, and that was the top priority. That decision to do everything we could to protect education drove the rest of the budget. And a key piece of that was tapping 400 million out of the educational stability fund. Um, I was very pleased that that was a strong bipartisan vote to do that. That was a supermajority vote. Uh, and when you see other states cutting education budgets, I think Oregon should be pleased that we are protecting our schools, our early childhood programs and higher education in what are very difficult times. So we tap reserves for $400 million. We made about $400 million in budget reductions, but major programs were essentially held harmless. Again, we protected education, child welfare, um, our housing investments that we've made, economic development, the things that are really important right now here in the recession. And then we all also uh, um, looked at different pots of money and tapped about $400 million in one-time dollars. Um, uh, reserves and, and surpluses in different parts of state government um, that will make our situation more difficult next year because when you use one-time dollars instead of making reductions that roll up, um, it does make our uh, predicament in the next uh, two-year budget difficult. But our priority was to protect education and do as little harm to essential programs as possible um, because stability and, and um, the ability to help people right now uh, was so important. So we did tap about 400 million in one-time dollars. So all told, we balanced the budget. We have $200 million in the emergency fund uh, um, uh, to address fire season and other ongoing issues. Uh, we also uh, put aside about $100 million, well it was $100 million in a special purpose fund for the Oregon Health Authority and the Department of Human Services for caseload increases, which is really important. It's hard to predict right now what our caseloads will look like in economic recessions. The need for services go up, so we wanna make sure we can address any caseload changes in the next uh, six to 12 months. We also approved some capital construction projects um, because with the uh, 2020 session, the regular session not concluding, we did, have some bonding capacity. So we made some adjustments and then approved uh, uh, some public construction projects at four of the university campuses as well as at uh, the Capitol in Salem, continuing the construction there. That'll put people to work, which will create needed economic activity. We also approved another uh, $50 million in bonding for affordable housing construction and $30 million for critical water infrastructure projects, uh, about 20 million in bonding for the city of Salem, and then some cash investments for uh, the Warm Springs um, Reservation. They continue to have water problems as well as uh, the Sweet Home water system. So trying to make critical investments uh, in basic infrastructure as well during the session.